Hello, welcome to the Wolf Wider podcast episode four. My name is Francis. Today we're going to be looking at my finished Bismarck cardigan. We're going to be looking at works in my works in progress and seeing what progress I've made on that. Um, we've got something that I've just cast on, so we'll be um, looking at that, talking about the unusual construction of it. Um, and we're going to be going out for a walk with Skipper the dog. And then we're going to be reviving a project that has got somewhat sidelined. So grab your nitty, come and join me um, and see what we've got in this episode. Hello and welcome to the Wool Wider podcast episode four and let's start off before we get into the knitting of just saying wow, wow and thank you. Um, the first couple of episodes of, of um, the Wool Winder um, we had a lovely uh, response from um, you know a nice amount of people um, and it was lovely and then um, I've had a really eventful weekend um, or, or a week, um, my son got married, um, and, uh, it was just joyous. It was just full of, <laughs> you know, love, laughter, tears. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was just amazing. And during that time, we stayed a couple of nights in the hotel, even though it was actually very local to us, just to really make it, um, a, a family event. And during that, and uh, during that time um, that we were staying at the hotel, episode three suddenly started to become more popular than the other two videos have been, um, and it just kept climbing and climbing. And every time, um, I was going to say, I'll say we looked at it, it's actually more my husband because he's a, a figures person, um, more pat, yeah, a lot more than I am. Let's be honest, um, and it's just kept going up. And up, and um, and uh, since we've gone back home, it it's carried on, and we've oh, we've had some lovely comments, um, lots of people subscribing. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody, um, for those of you that have started at the beginning, um, but also a huge welcome to anybody that's new, and to those of you that has subscribed. Um, yeah, I'm really blown away by it. I'm trying not to think about it too much. Um, it's uh, just viewing it as I have you, my friends, sitting there watching um, and enjoying the knitting chat. Um, so, um, but uh, but it's been really lovely. Um, I've got a few photos of the wedding for anybody that's interested, but I'll tack those on at the end um, after the knitting. Um, and, uh, and then coming up, we've also got a dog walk um, a little bit dog walk. Uh, Skipper's gone um, back o over to Suffolk now, um, so it's quiet in my garden um, now. Um, and um, what else have we got coming up? And then, as I mentioned before, uh, works in progress. Obviously, we've talked about my Finnish uh, Bismarck. Um, and um, uh, yeah, something I've picked up that's nearly finished and not quite so. Yeah, let's let's uh, get on it into it and and have a look um, at, at what we've got. So here is my finished Bismarck cardigan. Um, it's got shaping um, at the waist, so it comes in at the waist and then comes out at the bust. Just a couple of stitches, but just enough to give it a little bit of definition. Um, it's got the um, set in sleeves, so again, there's that bit more definition um, to the shape of the cardigan rather than it just being something that sort of, certainly with me, would drown me anyway. Um, and um, we've got um, for the, the pattern, and you can see, I love the lines that come up, so it's got that regular repeat going over. It's a four line, a four row repeat even, with only one row being um, lace stitches, the other three rows being stocking stitch. So it's a relatively straightforward pattern. Um, 
The edges are finished off um, in a gas stitch um, and um, yeah, it's nice straight, it's made in summer light, double knit. I'll put the link to the pattern on there so that you can have a look if you're if that's something you're interested in. Um, okay, so why don't you come and sit down um, and uh, we'll dive into uh, this episode. Okay, so when I was finishing the Bismarck cardigan, um, the last part that I was doing was putting on the button band. Um, and when I did the Angelou cardigan, quite a few other cardigans I've done, I haven't put buttonholes and buttons on them because I don't ever wear my cardigans done up. Um, it isn't a look that I feel is very flattering on me. Um, so sometimes I just don't put them in there at all. Um, and it can create a slightly different look. But also the other thing is that um, if you're not wearing your car your buttons down your buttonholes need to be particularly good because they're more visible if the buttons aren't in them so um i decided to have a little play around with i so I, I do have quite a good buttonhole um one that i follow which actually i think i picked up on fruity knitting if i remember rightly quite a number of years ago um uh, but i decided to try because even there it sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't so it's less, it can be slightly hit or miss as so i may have to undo it and redo it so I thought I'd have another try, um, try something different. Um, now, a book that I am loving at the moment is Patty Lyon's um, Knitting Bag of Tricks. I'm going to call it Book of Tricks, Bag of Tricks, because it is a book of tricks, really, isn't it? Um, and um, she's got a buttonhole in there. So I decided that on there, on this, I would do that. And, yeah, I think it's come out quite well. Um, you can't really see the buttonholes. Um, and I guess that's really what we're, what we're looking for. Let me see if it's a little bit closer to you. Um, I guess that's what exactly what I'm trying to achieve is not, not having the uh, buttonholes, um, visible. What I found was the stitch before the buttonhole on them was sometimes more visible. So I'm going to need to watch that when I'm doing it. Um, so um, I'll just pop in a little bit of um, my knitting the buttonhole so you can get a little idea of, of um, how we were doing it. Um, but um, if you enjoy knitting, um, you know, I, I found that book really interesting in the way that Patty Lyon just pulls, pulls apart the knitting, um, the various different stages of knitting, processes of knitting, um, and looks at them um and as to why they don't work as to what's actually happening when you're creating those stitches um so yeah it's 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 really interesting <laughs> I think um, each time I look at um, or I want to do a buttonhole, I'm probably going to need to go back and sort of 
recover, read through the book. Um, my memory doesn't retain that level of information, not completely accurately enough. So there'll be a step that I'll miss. And of course, therefore, the buttonhole won't work. So, um, but um, yeah, I'll put a link on um, to Patty Lyon's book, um, just a, um, a straightforward link if you, if you want to easily find it. Um, but it's got obviously available in lots of places. Um, okay, so on to my working progress. Or, no, I make that sound like I've only got one work in progress. That is never going to be the case, I'm sure, ever. Um, so, Tolsta Tea, you remember um, previous episodes that I've been working on that. Um, so, let's have a little look. There we are. So this is the front that you're looking at here. And the uh, back comes up a bit higher because of the short row shaping. Um, and I'm quite a way down the body now. Um, I'll be just hold that. Yep, it's coming down to, I guess, just, just beyond my waist. Um, what I've done, um, it, this is something that I do um, a lot to try and make sure um, that I'm getting good fit because if I'm going to knit something, if I'm going to make something myself, obviously you want to make sure that it fits you um, as best as possible. Uh, so anyway, I've got this lovely uh, knitted t-shirt shop bought one um, that comes down, just sits on my sort of hips in just the, just the place where I wanted to sit. So I took the measurement of that garment um, which was, I think it was 60, 61 centimetres, 60 centimetres. Um, and so that's the measurement that I'm looking to knit my Tolster T to. So you can see, where are we? Somewhere here, I put a marker when I got to 40 centimetres. Here we are, there's a little green marker here. So I reckon I'm probably on about 43 centimetres now. Um, so all still straightforward stocking stitch um so it's always nice to have one like that this is my evening project really so um my new finishing off this was what i was doing when i knit in the morning when i've got better concentration um when i get into the evening after i finish work and i'm starting to get tired then i tend to um prefer to knit something straightforward stocking stitch or indeed in the car um, there's less journeys going on at the moment because we're not going up and down to see my daughter at university. Um, but, um, I do like to knit in the car, um, and my daughter is 500 miles away. So, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of knitting, um, gets done, uh, in the car. So, um, but, uh, so at the moment this is, this is being done in the evening. Um, I, <laughs> out, out of somewhat impatience. I um, decided to have a go at the uh, sleeve. So you'll remember I've got my stitches sitting there on um, a ribbon waiting to pick up the stitches. Um, and I've already done it now on the right sleeve, but I'm gonna have to take it out and redo it. There is, and I'm sure you probably won't pick it up on the camera, but there is a very faint line along that pickup line the stitches are not twisted, but they are slightly lopsided. Um, so not quite sure what I've done. Um, I'm, yeah, I've not quite got Patty Lyons technique for being able to completely evaluate what's gone wrong. Um, and it's, this is, that's certainly not something she talks about um, in her book. Um, so anyway, best thing to do is undo it and redo it because if I don't, um, it will always irk me. So, um, yeah, that's going to need to be done. Um, so, but it's, yeah, it's coming on nicely. Um, it's going to, I'm going to pick up the stitches and do a, um, I could, sorry, <laughs> um, an I call called bind off on the neck. Um, and on the sleeves um, and I will um, take some photos video and talk you through that when I when I do that because that's a, 
um, slightly different sort of detail that's intra and it's not, I'm sure there's plenty of you that have already done that, but um, yeah, it's uh, um, an interesting one to talk about. Okay, let's now take a little break and go out for a dog walk with um, Skipper. Um, we take him out to um, the open space um, near us, which kind of lies between St Albans, where I live, and um, and the village, the next village along. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about my project that I'm reviving. So I mentioned at the beginning of um, this episode that um, there's a um, an almost finished item that I was going to talk to you about, and you might you may have seen that I had a pile um, in the first first couple of episodes of knitwear that was almost finished but not quite, um, and um, there's a, we've obviously made a slight slight dent on that, but there's an awful long way to go. So. <laughs> There's going to be lots of stuff to talk about over the next a few episodes. So I thought I'd talk about this this one um, first and pick and pick this up. Um, this is a coral which was from Essential Brights, which is interesting because the version I've chosen is not at all bright. Um, and it is um, it's a slipover or a tank top, um, and um, it's almost finished. It just needs. It's um, armholes um, picked up, picked up here, um, and the ribbing on the armholes and the seam done, um, and of course the wonderful ends. Um, and why have I put it down? Who knows? Um, sometimes you know you pick up something else and you get engrossed in that. And I know I had a little bit of not entirely happy at one point with the. Um, short row shaping on the shoulders um but I, I i undid those and redid them and i wonder whether that after i'd done that i kind of i don't know didn't feel inspired to do it anyway um it's on the in the pattern for coral and i'll put a link up to it there um it's knitted in someone like dk if my memory serves me right and kid silk haze rowan yarns um and um I've knitted this in hand knit cotton, and now my it, the reason was because um, I was working in the store at the time in the Rowan store, and I loved 
this color. Um, and I thought, oh, it's, that would look fabulous with jeans, white jeans or, or denim jeans. Um, and that was my inspiration for doing it. And I, I remember casting it on because I cast it on um, going down to Cornwall for a holiday in 2020. I'm trying to think now where we were. 20, it must have been 2021 because I'm pretty sure the summer holiday got cancelled in 2020. Um, yeah, 2021, that sounds right. So two years ago. Um, and um, missed it really quickly um, up until um, we got to those shoulders. So, um, yeah, so here we are. So that's that. Since then, I've picked up the pattern and done the pattern another time. And... Um, in fact, I have some of my pictures on some of my um, social media things that have got me wearing this with a, a white blouse, which I love. So this is, again, the same pattern, the coral pattern. Um, this is in felted tweed and kid silk haze. Um, and, you know, there are lots of things. As long as you check, you've got that right tension, you know. Um, there are lots of variations, double knit yarn, kid silk haze. You can play around with it. It's such a simple pattern. You've got um, straightforward back, stocking stitch, and then up to the V, then it gets interesting at the V, and then you've got the, the finishing off to do. So um, actually, and that's why I thought it'd be good to talk about it today, it actually makes quite a good holiday knit, something easy to take away. As I say, when I did my first one, um, I did, did it, was doing it on the beach. Uh, and in the car on the way down. So, um, yeah, it's a lovely pattern. So I'm going to pick up these stitches um, and get the uh, armholes finished, side seams, shouldn't take too long. Um, and then hopefully we will have a finished garment to um, share with you for that on the next episode. Okay, so I have also started um, this week the Nach Chatten, um cardigan, which was the purchase that I made from Stitches and Cream in Falmouth, um, and um, wound the uh, the yarn up for it. Um, so it was my birthday um, a couple of weeks back, and I asked for a um, wool winder which obviously is, and the name Woolwinder comes from, um, so I'm one half of um, a small little um, business called uh, Woolwinder Workshops, and myself and um, my business partner, Alison, we run um, workshops and escape days. So, um, and that name came from the fact that when we worked in the store together before it closed, we had this wool winder sitting there taking pride of price on this lovely round wooden table. Um, and um, we gave ourselves a nickname on a WhatsApp group that we had, that staff had of wool winders. So that's where that came from. So when I was looking for a name for um, my YouTube, the wool winder just kind of felt like the obvious avenue to go without, so without trying to reinvent the wheel I suppose to speak so so um I missed that wheel winder we used to have in the store um so um yeah so I asked if I could have a wheel winder of my own um for my for my birthday so um in a minute you'll see me um getting started with that and getting the first of my skeins um of my was it yarn Exquisite four ply, that's right. West Yorkshire spinners, exquisite four ply. So you see me spinning up the first couple of those. Um, it's, it's a lovely, um, it's quite enjoyable um, just uh, uh, turning these into um, cakes. And um, not so much fun when you've got 12 or so to do, but to, that was that was an enjoyable thing. And so then I've cast on the Nachschatten, which means apparently nightshade, I'm told by my um, German friend Gabby. Um, 
I've cast on the first part of the cardigan is a really unusual construction. And so what I'm thinking is I'll, I'll um, take you through it as I do all the various stages of it. So this is the cast on. It was a provisional cast on. Um, and I'm going to add some photos here so that you can see me getting stars in. But the way I do uh, do my provisional cast on, just because it feels the most intuitive to me, um, is just a single um, crochet chain um, and then going into um, the bumps on the back of the crochet chain, which is the opposite place you go into um, if you're normally crocheting when it's the flat side. Um, so I've done that picked it up let me i'm going to come a little bit closer to you so you could just see that's on the top there it does it's not the most standout yarn it just happened to be what it was what was standing nearby um so that's the crochet chain across the top and then picked up the stitches and off we go so the first part of the pattern is knitting i think it's 18 rows um on stocking stitch um now this seam actually goes if you imagine down the center line of my shoulder blades um, and this is going to knit down one sleeve so you increase the stitches you end up going on to a small circular needle um, or DPN um, but it'd be a small circular for me um, and we're going down knitting the sleeve down here and then you use a Latvian braid on the end so that will be interesting I've not done one of those before um, and I'll talk to you again about that when I get to that point. And then you come back to here where you've got the um, provisional cast on um, and pick up the stitches and go back the other way, repeat the same the other way. So that is going to be really interesting and definitely my morning knit when I need to concentrate or at least certainly on the more technical bits. Um, there's some straight bits of um, stopping stitch, but I, I guess I can do it at any time too. So, um, right, so I'm going to take you to um, my wall winding um, and, um, and then we'll, we'll be ready to sign off. I did enjoy the wall winding. Took me back to being um, back in the store. Um, so um, I just want to say thank you again to everybody for watching, and particularly if you've got to this point, um, you know, you you stopped and um, watched um, the whole thing and enjoyed it, and that's that that's feel really special. So thank you so much. Um, if you are enjoying it please um, subscribe um, and um, click on the alerts so that you know when um, there's another video coming out. Um, and um, until then, I will leave you and say take care um, and look forward to catching you up, catching up again, Eagle, with his... <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye-bye.